Dari Usman ibni Affan berkata, Aku mendengar Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam bersabda, Sesiapa yang membaca Bismillahilladzi la yadurru ma'a ismihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fis sama' wa huwa as-sami'ul 'alim. Yang bermaksud dengan nama Allah yang dengan namanya tidak ada sesuatu pun yang dapat memberikan kemudaratan di bumi maupun di langit. Dialah yang maha mendengar lagi maha mengetahui. Sebanyak tiga kali, maka dia tidak akan ditimpa bala yang datang secara tiba-tiba sehingga subuh. Dan barang siapa yang membacanya ketika subuh sebanyak tiga kali, maka dia tidak akan ditimpa bala secara tiba-tiba sehingga petang, iaitu malam. Hadis Rawahu Abu Dawud menurut Syekh Shu'ib Al-Arnud, hadis ini adalah Hasan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya iwal mursalin Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wasallim Rabbi syrah li sadri wa yassir li amri Wahlul uhtata min lisani yafqahu qawli Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh A very good day to everyone So how's everyone doing? I'm sure that uh, many of you here are missing Uh, your school, friends and also teachers. However, please cheer up and be patient. Um, I'm sure this, all this will be over soon, okay? Okay, before I proceed, um, I would like to extend my heartful thanks to Majlis Agama Islam Negeri Perlis, Jabatan Agama Islam Negeri Perlis, Kerajaan Negeri Perlis and Jabatan Pendidikan Negeri Perlis For making this session possible okay uh, let me introduce myself first okay uh, I am a new face in the English language team okay uh, I am Juan Norazila Binti Matno I'm a teacher in SMK Dato Ali Ahmad okay you can call me Puan Azila or teacher Azila right okay for this session okay although I'm tasked to do something for form 4 but uh, actually Uh, what I'm sharing in this session is something that can be used uh, regardless of you are in Form 1, Form 2, Form 3 or Form 4. Anybody can use it, okay? Uh, so, we are going to look at, uh, I'll be sharing uh, some ideas and tips on how to improve your language proficiency through vocabulary building. So, before we go further, pardon me if I switch to BM uh, every now and then because I'll be using BM to make sure you understand what I'm saying. So maybe I need to use BM to explain things further. Okay, so let's look at the aims of our session. All right. Okay, the aim of the session, the aims of the session, first is to help you understand what is language proficiency. And then to know the different language skills, okay? Because when when we talk about language, there are a few skills that you need to master, okay? And then the third one is to share tips on how to improve language proficiency through vocabulary learning, okay? So do you know what is vocabulary? Vocabulary words, all right? So. The session will be divided into three parts, okay? The first part, I will explain what is language proficiency. And then the second part, I'll be talking about what are the language skills one needs to acquire. And the third part, we'll be looking at how to build vocabulary knowledge and how to use it to improve your language proficiency. Okay. So, let's look at the definition of language proficiency. Okay, language proficiency is the ability of an individual to use language with a level of accuracy 
that transfers meaning in production and comprehension. Okay, so ability, kemampuan, individual, individu, use language, menggunakan bahasa with a level of accuracy dengan tepat that transfer meaning yang men uh, memindahkan maklumat dari segi produksi dan juga kefahaman, comprehension. And, and the second uh, definition is a measurement of how an individual has mastered a language. Mastered di sini bukan tuan. Mastered di sini maksudnya menguasai. Uh, setakat mana sesuatu individu itu berjaya menguasai sesuatu bahasa. And of course our focus for today is the English language. Okay, the second and the third one is the ability to use the language in a real world situation. In a spontaneous interaction and non-rehearsed context in acceptable and appropriate manners. Ability, lagi kemampuan. Okay. Use the language, menggunakan bahasa. Real world situation, real world. Authentic, ori, ori. Okay, or, authentic. In a spontaneous interaction, secara spontan. Okay, and non-rehearsed. Bukannya rehearsed, bukannya yang kita... Uh, Praktis uh, kita rancang spontaneous in acceptable and appropriate manners acceptable yang boleh diterima appropriate bersesuaian okay menyampaikan maklumat berkongsi maklumat memahami maklumat dalam situasi yang sebenar original situation ha. spontaneous interaction interaksi spontan Bukan yang kita rancang, bukan yang kita tulis Not that something that you write and then you read That is not spontaneous That is rehearsed Okay Okay What are the main skills in learning a language? Main skills Maksudnya kemahiran There are four main skills Okay, usually we divide these four skills into two, production and comprehension. For pro production, we focus on your writing and your speaking skills. And then for comprehension, we focus on listening and reading. Okay, so production means something that you produce. Your uh, speaking, your writing when you write an essay. When you write a letter, when you write notes, uh, that falls under the writing skill. And then when you speak, when your teacher asks you a question, you answer. Okay. When you talk to your friend, when somebody, a tourist, for example, asking you direction to go to Kuala Perlis, so you need to speak. Your ability to speak is what we call the speaking skills. And then you have, of course, the listening and reading okay when you read newspaper you read novel you read articles you read uh, posters okay to find information uh, that is we call reading skills and then listening listening means when someone asks you questions when you listen to uh, talk shows you listen to me giving you uh, expl explanations sharing sessions you listen to songs and then you watch movie and you listen to the dialogue. That is what we call listening skills. Okay. And of course, it has to be in a authentic situation. Authentic real situ situation. Okay. Although there are four skills. Okay. Generally, generally, students, most students, they are good in certain skills. They are okay in certain skills, but they are quite lacking, quite slow in achieving uh, certain skills. And generally, among my students, most of my students, they are a bit uh, scared to speak, a bit uh, reluctant to speak. So, to be a good language user you need to have you need to master all the four skills writing listening reading and speaking and of course if your vocabulary is good you would be able to improve all these four skills 
okay now how how do i know how proficient i am okay as for form 1 form 2 form 3 and form 4 and for the uh, primary schools i think until form uh, standard 3 year 3 okay we are using the CEFR as a reference. The Malaysian education system now uses the CEFR as a guideline to know one's level of proficiency. We are using uh, this CEFR as a reference because uh, this CEFR gives uh, enough definition on all the four skills so you know where you are. Okay. So this one is used usually to uh, measure your proficiency in the second language. Okay, like English in Malaysia is a second language. Okay, so let's look at the CFR global scale. If you are in the secondary school, okay, form one, form two, and form three, we we hope that you are already in the A2 band. Okay? What is the A2 band? You can understand sentences and frequently used expressions related to areas of most immediate relevance. For example, your basic personal and family information, shopping, local geography, employment, and then you can also communicate in simple and routine tasks requiring a simple and direct exchange of information on familiar and routine matters. <coughs> you can describe in simple terms aspects of his or her background, immediate environment and matters in areas of immediate need. So in other words, you can tell you can share, you can communicate about things that happen around you, things that you are familiar with. Okay, and then when people uh, uh, communicate with you or you read text, you can understand sentences and frequently use expressions that are related to matters that you are familiar with. However, if you are in Form 4, you have to work towards achieving B1. What is B1? B1 is uh, where you can understand the main points of clear standard input on familiar matters regularly encountered in work, school, leisure, etc. Can deal with most situations likely to arise while travelling in an area where the language is spoken can produce simple connected text on topics which are familiar or of personal interest. Okay, kalau tadi dia kata sentence, ah, sekarang ni connected text. So you have to, uh, you have to move one step further from sentences to text. Okay, and then can describe experiences and events. Of course, when you describe experiences, you have to use many 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 types of words dreams hopes and ambitions and briefly give reasons and explanations for opinions and plans okay for example in a2 i ask you what is your ambition i want to be a teacher for example okay but if you are in b1 when i ask you what is your ambition so your answers might be longer. Okay. At first I thought I would love to be a teacher. However, after uh, my exam and looking at my results and reflecting on my interests, I think I would try something else. See the difference in the length of your answer. So if you are in B1, you should be able to produce the second answer that I gave you just now. Alright, so in order for you to do that, you need the vocab. You need to have the knowledge of words. Okay, if you don't know the words, how are you going to explain to people? And if you don't understand the words, if you read a longer text, you might not be able to understand what the text is trying to tell you. Okay, so in this B1, 
Okay, hopefully, hopefully you are able to read around 500 to 600 words text and you are able to understand 90% of the words. If you are already there, okay, and the text is something slightly unfamiliar to you, like for example, you are very familiar with Perlis. You are not very familiar with the culture in Bangkok. But when you read a text about Bangkok, you'll be able to understand it uh, so that you are already in B1. But if you don't understand you in every sentence that you read, you find words that you don't understand, maybe you are not at B1 level yet. Okay? That is for reading. But of course, you have to also think about the other three skills, writing, speaking and listening. Okay, so how can learning more words helps my language proficiency? Faham tak apa dia proficiency tadi? Proficiency is kemahiran. Language proficiency, kemahiran berbahasa. Okay, you have to start somewhere. Never ever say that oh, English ni susah lah, payah lah. Even in bahasa Melayu, you start with simple words. When you were babies, you start... You start with the word mak, ayah, makan. Until now, you are in form 4 or you are in form 3 or you are in form 2. You can express your feelings. You can say what you like, what you don't like. You can tell about things. That is in your first language. The same process can also happen in the second language. It's just that you start a little bit later. Never mind. It is, it is something that you can do. Okay? So... How can learning more words help my language proficiency? In, in, in this case, uh, English, okay? Okay, with good vocabulary, you can convey and, uh, and share information better, okay? Uh, with good vocabulary knowledge, you can understand the information better. If you have good vocabulary, you can ask better questions, understand the situation better, and will be able to learn more. Okay, you are not gonna be, you are not gonna be at one stage, just one stage. You're gonna have to move yourself to push yourself forward. You have to go somewhere. You are not going to be uh, static at one point. So with vocabulary learning, vocabulary building, you can improve your language proficiency. Of course, grammar is important. But if you don't have the words, there's no point uh, you learning grammar. You won't be able to understand the grammar parts as well. So build your proficiency with vocabulary and then you use grammar also to build your proficiency. Okay, so with good vocabulary, you can convey and share information better. For example, okay, uh, when I ask you, okay, uh, what is your favorite color? My favorite color is red. Okay, are you wrong? No, you are right, wrong. But there are many shades of red. All right, you have pinkish red, you have ruby red. Okay, so in order for you to describe the the right shade of red that you like, you need to have the vocabulary. So, you can convey and share information better. For example, you see someone being uh, hit by a car. When people ask you, can you tell me the color of the car? Blue. So, what blue? What type of blue? Alright? So, if you have better vocabulary, you can give better description of the car. Alright? Not just the color. You might uh, also tell the shape of the car. Alright? Uh, maybe uh, the speed of the car going at the time of the accident. Okay? So, with good vocabulary knowledge, you can understand the information better. For example, you travel to a country where English is being used widely. Alright? So, you want to go somewhere. Okay? You need to ask a person. For example, you want to go to the museum. If you have very limited vocabulary, you might not understand what the person 
is telling you so you might get lost right because you don't get the whole meaning in the information being shared with you all right and oh, of course if you have good vocabulary you can ask better questions you can understand the situation better and you will be able to learn more all right so how do you improve your proficiency through vocabulary building okay the first step is you must always learn new words when i say learn new words bukannya sebulan sekali belajar satu perkataan you have to learn new words every day at least a word a day okay learn the spelling and understand the meaning of the words all right not just the spelling and not just the meaning you must also find out how the word is pronounced correctly because even if you know the spelling if you understand the meaning if you pronounce it wrongly you will convey the wrong information okay not just learn if you learn but you don't use the new words all right it will go to your subconscious mind it will not be present in your mind when you want to use it so you have to keep on using the new words you have to practice using the new words because through practice you will reinforce your knowledge and understanding of the meaning because one word if it if it is being used in a situation might convey a different meaning but if you use it in another definite um, uh, in another situation it might give another meaning so practice it because when you use the words you'll be able to use it in different situations and you will understand the meaning better once you are able to do all this definitely you will have better proficiency in english language all right so what happened when i use the new words i pronounce it wrongly i don't uh, really understand the meaning what should i do never mind take a step back and learn the new words again it is a learning process it doesn't have to be one way like this you can always take a step back and relearn the new words okay let's look at this one how do i learn new words and build my vocabulary all right it's easy okay teacher kata satu word satu hari how do i find the word that i don't understand okay the simplest one is to read read and read make sure you feel reading is fun if you are reading something that you don't like you might find it boring so after three sentences then you're gonna leave it under your bed or leave it in your bag so find something that you like and make it fun for example you like sports read an article about sports it doesn't have to be books it doesn't have to be novel it can be something as short as a, a paragraph with 10 sentences you have to start somewhere okay in that one paragraph of 10 sentences you might find one or two words that you don't you don't understand okay and then you focus you pick out that words and then you find out the meaning and then you use it okay to reinforce your knowledge of the word okay like i said just now learn at least a word a day use a dictionary and thesaurus okay learn the spelling and also the pronunciation okay there are many ways you can find the meaning of the words however for today's session i'm going to focus on the use of a dictionary okay if you find a word that you don't understand you can use a dictionary and thesaurus what is thesaurus thesaurus is something like a dictionary but it gives you similar meanings opposite meanings of the word okay so it gives you more information about the word uh, uh, if you go to this uh, https dictionary cambridge.org okay 
uh, if you go to this website, okay, you can find the meaning of the words you, that you don't understand. You can listen to the pronunciation. Of course, it is in the British English. Okay, you can play the uh, the the sound of the words as many times as you like. Okay, just click at the speaker button and you will hear someone pronouncing the words. Alright, if you don't understand the explanation in English, you can scroll down and then you can find uh, translation English BM. Okay, so this is a very useful website. I know that most of you uh, have handphones and you have access to the internet. So if you don't understand, if you, if you are reading an article uh, in a website, so you don't understand a word, you can just go to this website and then you find the meaning of the word that you don't understand and then you hear how it is being pronounced. If you cannot understand the explanation or the meaning in English, you can choose the uh, uh, English BM uh, translation. Okay, And of course, if you, you do all this alone, it will not be enough. I know that you young people love to play games. So, you can play words related games such as Scrabble, uh, crossword puzzle, okay? And also, uh, you, you can play like word maze, right? Word maze is very good to help you identify the spelling. Uh, crossword puzzle will help you with the meaning because they will give you the meaning and then you have to find the words and fill in the boxes. And also Scrabble is also a good word, uh, is a, a good game uh, for spelling. But and again, of course, you can play it online. Okay, if you don't like to play these word related games, you can always watch movies, cartoons, videos or just listen to songs. Okay, when you listen to songs, of course, you're going to pick one or two words that you don't understand. But of course, you're going to pick it through oral, uh, oral listening. All right? By listening it, uh, to it, you pick up the words. So you try to write down. Try to write down how you hear it. And then check with the dictionary whether you have the correct spelling. All right? And then you might want to listen to the pronunciation again. Okay? And of course... If you have done all the above, you also need to use the words frequently. Practice using the words in conversations and writings. So, writings, bila nak tulis? Of course, when you go to school, even when you are now at home, all right, you have uh, online learning. Sometimes your teacher asks you to produce uh, some form of writings, a paragraph of your experience during the uh, MCO. Uh, and also, of course, you have conversations. All right? Speak English to your friends. Alah, teacher, malu lah, sat lagi salah. It's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. If, if you do it without mistakes, then you are already a proficient learner. But we know that we are not that proficient. So we need to improve ourselves. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay that you don't understand. But it is not okay to leave the mistake just like that and to not to find what that you don't understand. If you don't understand, go and find out. What is it that I don't understand? What is this word? How, uh, how do I say it? What is the meaning? Okay. Okay. So... How do I build my understanding of the words I learned? Alright, first of all, you have to identify the word. Kenal, kenal, pasti. Perkataan apa yang kamu tak faham. Kalau perkataan tu kamu dah faham, tak payahlah kamu nak cari maknanya. Okay, identify the word that you don't understand. And then, make sure when you have identified the word, you learn the spelling, the pronunciation, and of course, the meaning. Sometimes, one word has a few meanings okay and then you can think of other words linked to the word so this will reinforce your understanding of the word that you just learned 
and then again use the word frequently in conversations and writing okay now all right this is a technique that i would like to share with you all right i call it a mind blooming activity so i'm going to move to the whiteboard okay to demonstrate to you how i do this activity all right okay here i use different colors if you are a person who does not like different colors it's okay you can use blue all blue all black all red but i use different colors because it will be easier if when we move to the next step all right so i'm going to move to the whiteboard and do the activities there all right okay let's think of a word a very simple word any word okay um i'm going to use the word milk hmm i love to draw okay draw a glass of milk or if you can draw a cow you don't want to write the milk you want to write cow and then milk okay it's okay and then give yourself a few minutes just throw in as many words as possible memang mula-mula it's going to be difficult it's going to be tough tak boleh nak fikir just clear your mind when i say the word milk hungry cold milk milk comes from cow fresh okay it's okay if you want to use this black marker or you can use colored marker all right for words that you don't understand uh, for words that you understand you use one color for words that you are not sure of uh how do i spell yogurt you are not so sure so you just write yo you are not so sure so maybe you want to put a question mark a small question mark there you, even if you don't want to put it's okay and then uh and then you remember oh susu bila masam dia berketui what is berketui ah uh, you don't know okay tulis in bm Okay. All right. So okay, what we have here 1 2 3 4 5 6. 6 words. Actually, if you do this very often, in 3 minutes you can come up with 16 to 20 words, 14 words. All right? But at the beginning, don't worry if you can only come up with 5 or 6 words. Okay. And then, all right. Milk. Hungry. And then you try to say it out. I drink milk when i feel hungry i like to drink cold milk say it you don't have to say it to someone you can say it in front of a mirror okay cool and then fresh milk hmm. fresh milk oh i don't know how to use this word fresh milk of course then you can google fresh milk and then you will get Okay, fresh milk is good for your health. Ah. And then cow. Cows produce milk. Okay, you practice the sentences. You say it in front of a mirror. You can write it down. You can write it down here if you want to or you can write it down somewhere else. When I am hungry. I drink milk. Okay. So here you are practicing the vocabulary. You know hungry. All right? So you associate it with milk. So you build better understanding um better connection between between hungry and milk all right so you don't know 
yogurt. I know yogurt, but I don't know how to spell yogurt. Of course, go back to your dictionary. Oh, yogurt is spelled as Right. So this is the correct spelling. Okay, and then you might want to add a sentence or you might want to say out a sentence about yogurt. I like to eat yogurt. So you know oh, yogurt is a form of food because eat. I like to eat yogurt. So you add more information and also you give yourself more knowledge of the word. Okay, but what about this word that you don't understand? Oh, of course, again, go back and get yourself a dictionary. Berketul. Oh, wow. What is berketul? Cuddle. Cuddle? I heard something like this. Some, some similar words. Cuddle? Uh, what is the difference between cuddle? Okay, you might want to use a, a different color. And cradle. Okay, use a dictionary. Oh, berketul means cuddle. Cradle means buayan. Alright? Okay, so you do this. Every day, you do this every day. Start with a word that you know, and then you give, you throw in as many words as possible. As long as uh, when you, I say the word milk. Oh, expensive. Okay, sorry, expensive. You tell. Okay, you might want to use a, a a black marker. You can do do this in your books. Okay, expensive. Uh, you 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 find that uh, fresh milk, banana milk. Ah, uh, your favorite K-pop artist love to drink banana milk. Ah, uh, alright, okay. So this is one way of you expanding your vocabulary. Okay, you might want to to do with other words. Okay, shall we try a second word? Okay, maybe this time you want to use the same color. Tak ada pen color-color, ada satu color je. Never mind. Boleh. Okay, car. Oh. Spot. Uh, you don't know. What is this word? In English, okay. Is this the correct spelling? Tire, tire, tire. In English, my teacher said it's tire. How do I spell it? Ha. Okay. All right, and then you have. Blue, and then you have wiper, and then you have a uh, lampu belakang. Okay, all right. So again, you go back. Okay, find out. Okay, wiper. Okay, I already know this. I already know this. I already know this. I don't know this. Kenderaan. Use your dictionary. Kenderaan. Oh. Vehicle. Tire. How do I spell tire in English? Now I got the correct spelling. Lampu belakang. Tail light. Oh, I thought tail means a cock. 
But when it comes to call lampu belakang, we can call it tail light. Alright. So that is one way of you improving your vocabulary. Okay. But you don't uh, stop at that. You have to move on uh, to the next step to reinforce your understanding of the uh, of the word that you learn. Okay. Uh, this is what I call memorization. So you can have a small notebook or three different notebooks or you can have a piece of paper like this. All right. Words I know. Okay. From this one, you pick out words that you know. All right. Okay. The words that I use for memorization come from this mind blooming activity. All right. See, look at the color. The, the ones in green are the words that I know. Data, information, happy, social media, Google, games. But I'm not sure about the spelling of the word recipe. And I don't, un, I don't know the, the, the word hiburan in English. And I don't know the word melayari in English. So, I move to the next stage of memorization. Okay. And then you list down the first box of... Uh, where you list, the first box is where you list the words that you don't know. Uh, the words that you know. Okay? The ones in green just now. Information, happy, social media, games, Google, data. And then the second one, the words that you are not sure of. Whether the spelling is correct or not. It turns out that the spelling is wrong. Okay, R-E-S-E-P-I is a spelling in Bahasa Melayu. In English, it is being spelled R E C I P E. Okay. So, and then the third part. This is the most important part. Words I don't understand. Melayari, surfing. Turns out surfing ada dua makna, two meaning. Surfing the internet, surfing as ride the waves. Okay. So, surfing the internet and then get a sample sentence. He is surfing the internet. For information related to pollution. You write the sentence there as a sample. Okay? And then, surfing, write the waves. Example, Thomas loves to go surfing early in the morning. Okay? So, every day, you read this. If you already know the word, you feel that you are familiar with the word surfing, you can use it freely, you can understand the meaning, so you can move it to the box one words i know this one the recipe also you can move to words i know all right you can have this in a piece of paper you can put it around uh, uh, your room okay paste it on the wall okay every day you just add to words i know words i'm not sure of words i don't understand or you can use a small notebooks for this all right this is just a technique that you can use even when you are at home you don't have to wait for your teachers uh, to give you uh, online classes uh, online exercises you can do this on your own just pick any word that you understand uh, and then you start by uh, throwing in ideas of other words that might <coughs> be related to the word that you know car you know the word car it's a very simple word car but when you think about it you will generate other words and then you realize oh i don't understand the meaning of this word and this word is related to car so you find out okay and of course all right you can also uh, maybe while reading or while listening to songs or while mo uh, watch, watching movies you pick up words that you don't understand again of course you can use the dictionary to find out the meaning okay uh, and then to reinforce your knowledge you have to use it use the word that you have just learned okay so All right, let me recap what we have done in our session today. All right, to build your vocabulary, you need to read books, listen to songs, watch movies and videos to pick up new words. Make sure you find them fun and interesting. 
And then you have to find out the spelling, the meaning and correct pronunciation of the words. Make use of different tools available. You have dictionary, you have thesaurus, online or hard copies. Or you can uh, use word games to reinforce uh, your knowledge of the word. And then keep a journal of the words you have learned. Okay, the one that I share with you, the memori memorization part just now. And then of course, practice, practice, practice. Use the words in conversations and in writings. Because if you don't use it, the words that you learn will all go to your subconscious mind. You won't be able to recall it. You won't be able to understand it. So you have to keep on using the words that you have learned. Okay. Uh, again, you might find new words when you read books, listen to songs, watch movies and videos. Or you can always do the activity that I share with you to generate the words uh, by yourself. Okay? Hendak seribu daya, tak hendak seribu dalih. So you can always do it at home. Alright? It doesn't take long. Just put in a 10 minute effort, you will be able to develop more vocabulary. Okay? So I think we have come to the end of our session today. Alright, so let me end the session with a quote from Robin Williams. Okay, no matter what people tell you, words and ideas can change the world. So make sure you understand your words well and use your words wisely. So please stay safe, be safe. Scan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Daripada Anas bin Malik radhiyallahu anhu berkata, Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam pernah berdoa, Allahumma inni a'udzu bika minal barasi wal jununi wal juzami وَمِنْ سَيْئِ الْأَسْقَامِ Ya Allah, aku berlindung denganmu daripada penyakit sopa, penyakit gila, penyakit kusta dan penyakit-penyakit yang buruk. Hadis diriwayatkan oleh Al-Imam Abu Dawud dengan sanad yang sahih.